kind of surprised, man. Maybe I shouldn't be. These little cars are way better than I remember when I was a kid. Just take the thing and huck it. Things totally fine. Kids nowadays have it made, man. Look at that thing. See what the distance is like. What? How is it that far away? You can barely even see it. Get out of here. Now, you know you want to go ahead and get yourself some RC Guy Garage merch. Otherwise, today on RC Guy Garage, we've got... Let's throw it up on the roof and see what happens. A vehicle from a company called DRC. I'm assuming it's around that 116 scale, similar to vehicles that you've seen on my channel, such as this, 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 and who can forget? This one. This company reached out and they said, uh, hey guys, we like your channel. Are you interested in checking out one of these little trucks? And basically my answer was brushless. So, send it. What's in the box from DRC of this little, I think. See, I'll have to check to see if it's 1 16th or. So, it could even be 1 18th. It's pretty small. It is a brush truck. It's funny, one side has more detail than the other. So if you're interested in seeing what's inside of this box right here with RZ Guy Garage, stay tuned because we're gonna break into it. Now vehicles like this, I'm sure you can get online. Um, but a lot of these vehicles you're finding on Amazon, you can see DRC, I believe, is a rather large retailer or seller for uh, Amazon. They have basically like, I guess they have their own Amazon store. But you can see this vehicle right here, this is the one. So currently right now it's going for $71.99 with, uh, I guess if you have Prime, there's $8 in Prime savings. So it used to be 80 bucks. And then you can take an extra 10% off if you click on the coupon. So let's just throw it in the cart and we'll see, add to cart. And we'll see what this, um, no, it said discover. No, I don't want to discover additional products. So let's check and see what it looks like in the cart. So we need to save for later on those. So proceed to check out $68.84 for a coupon savings of $7.20. Then obviously there's tax that's got to be collected. So $64.79 before tax and then $68.84. So we're going to see is, is this worth $70 of your hard-earned money, whether if it's for a gift or if it's for yourself. So, yeah, I'm gonna check this out. Ah, oh. ah, oh, no. The top of the box talks about full scale. I'm not sure what they're getting at. They're showing a full range of motion of the trigger, which says full scale. I'm not positive why they're doing that. Uh, two differentials. So it has a front differential and a rear differential. Most likely no center diff or anything like that. It's probably just a direct drive type of deal. 2.4 gigahertz radio control system, which was what we're really used to seeing nowadays. It seems to be the industry standard. Uh, it does come with rechargeable batteries. It is a four-wheel drive RC car and 20-minute maximum driving time, I'm assuming, provided uh, with each battery. Now, this kit has two batteries and i believe if you go into the listing it shows that it has other specs then you could go ahead and read the specs on this side of the box this is where the english is obviously you could see eight plus as far as age blah 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 whatever kind of stuff drc i do like the way the box is the box is is, is very compact and i wish my wife was here so that she could like explain what she saw when I pulled this out, because I had this on the kitchen table, and what she saw or the comment that she made when I did open this. So now, I believe it's unboxing it this way. And, yep. So right away, you've got the uh, product manual. Looks like these are just contacts, USA, EU, and JP. Is that Japan? I have a hard time calling these hobby grade but at least it's saying there's the potential of being able to replace every little nut, bolt, screw, 
shock, everything, chassis. You can see the center drive shaft right there with its gears. So at least it gives you the ability to, if you break something, you can go ahead and replace it. So basic just instructions, showing you about safety, talking about how you uh, operate the remote itself. It takes three batteries in the remote, uh, on off switch. Now I don't know what that is. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, how you can set your steering trim. So it also has a potentiometer for speed control. So you can adjust it from like maybe one to 10, I guess. So I'm pretty sure this is proportional, which means it's not just a, you crank it to the left or the right, it cranks and cranks. Pretty sure proportional is that it adjusts like how you would move the steering wheel. So incrementally, proportionally. I think that's what it's showing. Specifications. Uh, and it looks like parts. I don't think they're option parts. Yeah, it's just literally the... It's the view of all the pieces and parts. Looks like it is plastic geared. So I am seeing plastic gears. I know it has plastic outdrive cups. This is a lesser expensive RC, so... Let's uh, see what's inside the box. Uh, cautions of the battery. So any kind of lipo battery you just want to be cautious of. So I pulled the truck out. Now this is the part of, of what my wife had said. So I pulled the truck out and I had it on the kitchen table. And she immediately said, after I pulled this bag off, she said, that's the most well-packaged RC that she has seen in the small scale and even the large scale because the way this thing was packaged... It is very well protected. It's a 1 18th, so it is a 1 18th scale, not a 1 16th scale. So, yeah. So you got it right there. High speed thrills, 4x4, four four, 18th scale. So that's what's missing on the box. 25 miles per hour maximum speed. So does that mean... Now that falls into that category. You got 40 kilometers per hour or 25... Yeah, see right there, 25 miles per hour, 2.4, rechargeable, it's showing two batteries, I already know it does come with two batteries, 40 minutes driving time, so that's 20 minutes per, so on each of these little towers, it comes with, uh, in its own little bag, comes with, I think these are those uh, lithium ion batteries, I believe, so DRC, uh, lithium, yep, lithium ion or poly polymer, polymer lithium ion little battery. These things are great. One little side thing is it does come with this uh, older style, like a mini kind of connector. Not quite a Molex connector. I forget what these are called. But that would maybe be the only drawback. But what it does prevent is it does prevent putting any other size battery inside of this car just because of this connector. So like I said, it did come with two batteries, one per side. Now I'm going to check the charge of these batteries right now just to see where they are. So you can see DRC 7.4, 6.21 watt hours. It's an 850 milliamp polymer lithium ion battery. And that's obviously for two. In this bag right here, this has something in it that I did not. So I, I took the contents out of the bag, but I didn't open this bag right here. And something I had noticed is it looks like it has like little bead lock protectors. Do you see what I'm saying? So it comes with an all-metal wrench, which is great. So that's a that's a step up because some vehicles in this category are giving you a plastic wrench, and the plastic wrench is a junk. It does give you these metal rings and a bag of screws and an Allen wrench. So what these are, let me show you. Comes with, oh, check it out. Comes with a mini screwdriver, Phillips. Comes with a USB 
style um, charger, which is just generic. Comes with body pins, extra screws, and a couple of nylocks, which I believe these nylocks right here are extra wheel nuts. So it looks like a couple extra screws, a couple extra wheel nuts, and some extra body pins. So, yeah. Yeah, it gives you, gives you four wheel nuts. Four body pins. Oh, no, six body pins. Oh, there's six body pins in there. That's pretty good. These are almost like having bead locks. Kind of gives you that bead lock look. And what's kind of neat is I think for a younger individual, what it would do is give them the ability to go ahead and throw on these anodized anodized aluminum bead lock rings. It's only for looks. I'm sure it does provide a certain amount of protection. So what I will do is I'll install these bead locks on this car uh, just to show you what it looks like. So I think that's a, that's a little bit of a bonus right there. Things got the bead lock looking, looking wheels or well, bead lock rings with a whole bunch of screws. And that is nice that these are 1.5 millimeter screws. That's pretty good. Now inside of this little foam here, the remote is underneath. So the remote is under there. Good size remote control. Uh, it does have a warning on it. Do not pull the trigger on the remote controller during connecting. So you have to make sure that you're not, I guess it must be some type of uh, neutral set up to where don't basically touch the controller, don't squeeze the throttle while you're setting up because I'm assuming it's just going to take off because uh, it, it won't know where neutral is, is my guess. So fast and furious, 2.4 gigahertz. So you can see it's got a speed switch. So you can turn it all the way down. It does have a steering trim left or right. Looks like it has a power light. Flip that on. Flashing light is indicating that it's looking for the model. Oh, there's something else in this bag. You gotta be kidding me. <laughs> it comes with a cleaning brush. This would be for maintenance. To go ahead and clean the vehicle when you were done. That's a pretty good thing right there. It's teaching, it's teaching proper, I guess, care and our maintenance and they're giving you the reason or the way to go ahead and clean your vehicle that's that's pretty neat so you got a sticker on the top here please remove the protective film on the car body before use so just like most lexan bodies there is a protective film that is on this and when you peel this off it will reveal a much vibrant sharper looking uh image now i'm going to leave this protective film on here because I'm just going to take it out for a rip, but it's called, it's called the Sandy Land. Kind of wish, uh, kind of wish they would figure out different names for these vehicles because Sandy Land kind of sounds like it's Candy Land. So, yeah. Wide open diffs. Friction shocks. So it should be pretty bouncy. Yep. And this is kind of neat. So it's got these little pull tabs that are attached to the pins, does a couple of things, makes it so that they're easy to pull off and harder to lose. Oh, look, we already lost one of the pins. A shiny clip with a black little pull tab or a rip cord. It actually has, it has a motor heat sink. Now I'm not saying this is any kind of waterproof. Seeing how things are open like this, this is not going to be a waterproof vehicle, so this may be better suited as an indoor vehicle. Can it go outside? Yeah. Maybe use it in the driveway, stay away from puddles, plastic outdrive cups, plastic non-adjustable links. Things seem pretty flexible. That's important when it comes to this grade of vehicle. Yeah, check that out. Look at that. The servo saver on this thing, which is built in there, it's designed for maximum protection. See how the servo is not moving? If I move the servo there, 
So the front end, the way this is designed, is made so that it can take the impacts and keep going. And for such a lightweight vehicle, it doesn't really have to have an ultra-tight servo uh, saver anyway. But you can see that. See the delay? I feel that that's probably an important feature. I think I might put that as a body decal. Uh, Wiring-wise, looks okay. It's got a five-wire servo, which is a little micro servo. Antenna is right there. And a little tiny brushed motor with little bullet connectors. Looks all right. The diffs are wide open. They might not have any diff grease in them, which on this scale might not be a big deal. But I may also, I may also crack a diff open on this little thing just to give it a check. But not too bad for a little tiny car. 70 bucks. But the proof is going to be uh, in the in the rip. 72% charge. So that's 72, 73% charge. So that's kind of up there. Same thing. So both of these batteries are charged um, beyond a storage charge. Might not be a big deal, but any kind of battery such as this, you got to be careful of them. So because this takes a specific type of charger, the charger I have has the uh, hundreds of different style plugs that I actually do have that charger or that plug. So I can go ahead and plug this in and I'm going to get this battery charged up. See as far as durability. <laughs> Might as well give it a durability test. Oh, I've had enough. So the uh, little sandy land from DRC, it's a little too. Um, a little too anemic. It looks like it'll take the abuse. So, seems like it takes the abuse. Maybe in a brushless version, this might be all right. But in the brushed version, even I think for a young individual, I think it's just way too, ah, it's way too anemic. It looks like I popped the shock out. So the shock just popped out of its little spot from the little toss that I gave it. It's fine. So I think from a, um, oh, I lost another body pin. <laughs> Get out of here. So it looks like it'll take the abuse. So you can see that I'm tossing the truck and it's taking the hits. So, Looks like the battery connector came undone. Let's see, you're gonna connect this back up. Let's see. It'll take the hits. Steering, still good. Let's throw it up on the roof and see what happens. Ah, oh, get stuck on the roof. So let's see if we can get this little car down. Should be pretty easy. Takes a hit. So I guess durability wise, it's kind of cool. A real younger individual, somebody that's maybe a first timer. Um, the question is, you know, would they get bored? And could you potentially use this as a parts vehicle uh, for something that was maybe uh, for a brushless. So, so that was a pretty good hit. Shock popped out again. Body is getting mangled. 
So let's see if I can pop that shock back in. So shock is back in. Looks like it's holding together. Durability, man, it's actually all right. Took a pretty steep hit. Now this is probably a bad idea. Probably shouldn't do that, but let's see if it'll climb over the Jaguar. Yeah, Bailey has the power. Bailey has the power to get up, but it does do it. I doubt it's going to climb the back window. Well, let's see. Oh, it did. Wow, all right. Now, see, I'm careful, though. So. Just very, very anemic. All right, I think that's good enough. All right, so maybe they should have, um, maybe they should have had a secondary thought and maybe sent me a little bit more of a powerful vehicle because um, the vehicle, while it does take the abuse, couple of things that I noticed right off, these pins, while these little tethers may be cool, the tethers get lost really fast. Maybe if I had placed them this way, they wouldn't have got you know lost. They got, I assume, pulled out from being placed this way going across the body. That's the only thing that I can assume. So I lost two body tethers. Uh, power wise, extremely anemic. Maybe if this thing came in a, uh, you can see it's still flashing. Maybe if this thing came in a, um, oh, wait a minute. I had the power all the way down. Oh my God. You've got to be kidding me. All right, well, we're going back out. All right, so now what we've done is we've got the power setting turned all the way up to high to see if we get a different experience. And that is a much different experience. Wow. Jeez. All right, so the thing rips a little bit quicker. <laughs> now the fact that I lost all the body pins <laughs> well I guess that's why they give you extra body pins oh the thing rips now A little bit different uh, on the higher power range. Ah. All right, I gotta get some body pins in this thing. We'll be right back out. Give this thing a real chance. So a little bit of a positive for this truck. Um, being that it has the little uh, thing here, being that um, you gotta make sure you install the tethers the right way. I'm going to go ahead and install some of these. I'm going to go ahead and install some of these extra body clips. So it's kind of a good thing that they gave you extra body clips. The other thing that I wanted to check out, the body is getting hammered, but I'm putting it through I'm putting it through some pretty good abuse right now. So the body is going to get smashed pretty good. Um, and leaving the cover on is probably a good thing. And discovering that switch, realizing that it was just a lack of power because I didn't have the switch up all the way, changed the way this truck moves. Um, and that was something I forgot. I think a weakness on these vehicles is the body. So one of the big things is possibly, if this is going to be for a younger individual, getting out the tape... And taping up the body, which is actually maybe something I should do right now. Just so I can try to keep this thing together. You can see the body shattered. 
all you need is just some duct tape. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of tape this back together so that it has a little bit more uh, to it. So just like that. Nothing crazy. So just like that, just keep the body together. Trim off the excess. Poke the body holes back in. So it definitely, um, it definitely wakes up if you pay attention. It definitely wakes back up once you turn that selector switch up. So I went ahead and put a little body protection on there. Like I said, I'm not going to use the tethered clips because I lost them. It does make a difference which way these little tethers go. I definitely was underwhelmed, but um, it was a quick little discovery of, oh yeah, there's a uh, power switch. Maybe if I crank the power switch all the way up, <laughs> maybe that'll change the experience. So we got to take it back out and see what it does. All right, start the screen record, screen record, start recording, skip countdown. Not too bad, man, you saw it jump that step. So inside, this thing should be a little rocket. <laughs> I don't need to go out to the street to get a max speed here. All right, let's see what the um, see what the GPS is even doing. We got zero satellites. Read. <laughs> it did not go 40. So, let's see what we got here. Still got zero satellites. That's interesting. Maybe I should go out to the street. Oh, four satellites. There we go. All right. We're getting some tracking information. So four satellites. That's probably enough to get a speed. So we'll see what this thing can do. That's already max speed. Max speed. Bring it in. Read. I didn't hit the start, did I? It did not go 40. Start. Distance is pretty good. That is definitely max speed. So, stop, read, miles per hour, max speed, 13 miles an hour. So granted, this is 2S. So let's go ahead and hit that start again. Distance wise, seriously, that's a pretty good distance away. So stop, read, 13 miles an hour. Let's take it out to the backyard. Ah, oh, you know what? Got to be careful taking this thing out to the backyard track. So I think that's good for the GNS. Go ahead and we're going to go in. We're going to shut off 
the GNS thing here. Hit back, off, off, okay. And it should shut off pretty quickly. All right, so I can shut this off. All right, so yeah, cracking open that uh, governor. Definitely changed. It's got some rip now to it. For a little brushed little monster. Little sandy land. So I'm saying these little cars can be fun, man. See what it can do with the jumps. See if it can even get through the grass. Yeah? Look at that. Let's take it over to the death jump. Now, this model says nothing about any kind of water resistance. So this is not a vehicle that you're gonna wanna take and hit puddles or anything like that. So we do have to be careful in this area. We don't wanna hit any puddles with this thing because it's definitely not designed for that. But, oh, right to the puddle. It's not gonna do any epic jumps, but it looks like it will take the abuse. Looks like it's got enough power to climb the hill. Let's see what it's got. Yeah. This is definitely more suited to inside. I mean, you can go outside, you can have some fun, but I think this is definitely more suited to inside type of stuff. So let's just take it inside, take it to the tile floor, and we'll see what this little thing can do. You know what's funny? You know, I never thought about my chalk blocks. That's actually holding. So I can't use that chalk block. Um, I don't really have any ramps. I need like an indoor ramp. You know what? Let's see what this thing does now. If I throw it on the roof. Ah, it gets stuck. Let's get the unsticking device. Takes the hits, man. That is something that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's taking the hits, man. It takes the hits and keeps on going. See, that's more like it. That's pretty good. Does it right in the grass too. I'm seeing if I can get it to do a wheelie. It might do a carpet wheelie. Alright. Let's give it a shot. See 
we got here. Oh, that's much better. Going to do a little water trick. Not too bad, man. The thing took quite a beating, especially, like I said, especially realizing that that slow switch plays a major part in um, in the speed operation of that vehicle. Sometimes I guess I'm just not used to the slow switch, but um, you can definitely hear in my voice right now, I'm surprised. Now, body-wise, probably definitely going to be a good idea. Um, number one, I lost the body uh, tethers, but that was because of the way I did things. So I want to make sure that if you're going to use these tethers, that you place them towards the inside. And I think there's still the possibility of the tethers being ripped out. Um, but yeah, so I lost what do I have only one tether out of the, the four that I had. But they give you an ample amount of body clips. Looks like they give you like an additional six so they gave me six body clips along with some extra wheel nuts um looks like we got a little bit of looseness here but the looseness is acceptable it doesn't look like it's anything that's an issue um switch that off definitely not anything that's waterproof or anything like that the battery pack did great seems like the servo has freed up a little bit to where it's operating fine uh, because of how flexible this thing is, I mean, a couple of times, I mean, I'm taking this thing and I'm chucking it across the yard. Get out of here! Just to see what would happen. I mean, you know that younger individuals, they'll do stupid stuff like that. They'll jump it off of a roof. They'll jump it off your shed. And this thing definitely took the abuse. Um... Very, very resilient little truck. Yeah, it doesn't have anything that tells you when the battery is, is, uh, or when the remote's still on, but it's still ripping. So, just looking at the pieces parts here, the links, flexible, the suspension arms. Suspension arms, lower suspension arms, are not as flexible as the upper links, but that's not a big deal. Um, these little rim saver things, doesn't look like it hit anywhere on the rim savers. So, tires are just a rubber tire with no foam, vented. Uh, definitely, again, this is not a water vehicle, but I will say... I am now pleasantly surprised. This thing is a little ripper. So if you're considering something like this, and 70 bucks is about what you've got to spend, uh, yeah, I'm going to leave a link in the description for this little guy. I don't think you could go wrong, man. Really don't. It's a little ripper. It really is. I'm very happy. Little, little DRC, little ripper. Oh! <laughs> Isn't that the point right there? Isn't that the point right there? This little ripper does supply smiles for miles. And even for somebody like me, you saw what I was doing to this thing. I mean, I was hucking this thing across my yard. 
because I didn't realize there was a speed switch. Well, I mean, I even said there was a speed switch, but I'm so not used to having a speed switch. Yeah, here you go from RC Guy Garage. Make sure what you do to get a better experience out of this thing, make sure you select the speed switch and put it on fast because otherwise you're gonna be extremely underwhelmed like I was during the first like half of this video. Don't you tell me it's recording now. It is recording now. You've got to be kidding me. All right. So what it is, is um, it's kind of like an onboard punch level. So it does get its maximum speed. It just has like an onboard punch level. That's what it is. Doesn't change really the speed of the vehicle. It changes the punch. So it can still get a max speed of 13 miles per hour. Uh, it doesn't make any sense. Or did I already do it the right way? Maybe I did it the right way. You know what I wonder? Here's a good question. I want to see if this thing can do a wheelie. Nope. <laughs> hey, look at that. Could take a little bit of a beating. Oh! Oh, dude, that was epic. <laughs> and it just keeps going. Check it out, man. Does like almost like a little backflip. <laughs> uh, let's see if anything came to see if anything came in the mail that's any good other than bills we don't want no stinking bills here the little ripper I'm telling you I, I almost gave up on that thing No, might have some pot. Where are we from? Red Cat Racing. Stinking awesome. Kind of surprised, man. Maybe I shouldn't be. These little cars are way better than I remember when I was a kid. Kids nowadays have it made, man. Look at that thing. Let's see what the distance is like. What? How is it that far away? You can barely even see it. Do the slalom. <laughs> Do the slalom. Yeah, kids have it. Kids have it made nowadays. You kidding me? It's so wrong. Kids have it made nowadays, man. You kids or younger individuals are having so much more fun than we did when we were kids, man. We had to play with popsicle sticks. It would be funny if it could itself right, but <laughs> I know it wouldn't. Way better. Way better. So it looks like it'll power up this hill now, no problem. Look at that. No stinking problem. Let's see what it does doing this. And we're still going. Full speed. Look at that. Are you kidding me? Cars that we would have had when we were younger would have point blank broken. 
Look at that. You stinking kidding me? Torture test. Look at that. What the heck? Is it on its wheels? You've got to be kidding me. Oh. Oh, I lost another body clip. So the body clips do just randomly pop off when you're beating the crap out of it. Let's see if I can get a good shot of this. Oh. Oh, there we go. Oh. Look at that. How does it do that? Oh, I got hung up on the plant. Well, you want to see if it takes abuse? Here you go. Oh, it's got a it's got some kind of protection. Is that some kind of heat protection? No, I don't know. Let's take the GPS out of there before I mangle the GPS. Oh, the GPS is off anyway. Unbelievable. Un stinking believable. I think I need to go with another another roof hit. And like I said, just take the thing and huck it. Things totally fine. <laughs> Look at this. What is it doing? <laughs> Coming back for more. Oh. Take it and Oh, shock came popped out again. That's right, pops right back in. Take it and throw it right up on the roof. Look at that. Oh, hey, check this out. All right, you want to see? You want to see if this thing will survive a crash? So I don't know if you can see it. The sun is probably right in the way. Right here. Coming right across the roof, just gonna launch it. Oh! <laughs> that was a fail. Try it again. Throw it up there. Ah! Oh. Ah, oh, no. GoPro going. Could you imagine if it's not recording? No, it's recording. Alright, I'm gonna give it a shot. See if I can. Alright, here we go. See what it can do. Coming right off the roof. Now that was a hit. Still going. All right. I don't know, man. What can you say? <laughs> Thing takes a stinking beating. I don't know, man. I'm just, I feel surprised. You saw what I was doing to that thing. Got a uh, couple packages in from uh, TeamRedCat.com. We got a fragile, which most likely is the body. And this is probably the arms. So, heat-wise, motor sink moved a little bit. Got to keep, keep in mind, the motor sink actually blocked off the, um, blocked off the holes, which I was experiencing a slight little 
like a stop and start, like the ESC may have been hot, and I think that was like a clue. So I was doing a little bit of stopping and starting, but once it cooled off, it seemed like it was fine. But I mean, look at this thing. Looks like we got a little bit of a bent something here. Bent dog bone, which probably can be rebent. Got to check that out. Back dog bones. <laughs> got a little bit of flex right there. <laughs> oh, I got a shock that kind of came out. But what's great, check it out. Just realign it. Put it back in its little hole here. Give it a squeeze. And it's right back and in. So we got two bent dog bones. But you got to figure, man. Look at the abuse. And I mean, still, uh, watch, check it out. It doesn't even really know that there are bent dog bones. So you could probably bend those dog bones back and you'd be good to go. So I don't know, man. I got to say, this little truck, this little stinking truck. I don't know about smiles for miles, but maybe we can talk about smiles for quarter miles. So... Not not too bad, really, honestly. Not too stinking bad. I think uh, 70 bucks as of right now, seems like it's worth it. You can see the plastic is peeling off to reveal a beautiful looking body underneath. So, just uh, duct tape. Duct tape the inside, you can see the body shattered. But I mean, it, it just I just launched it, so, and you saw I was chucking it. So anyways, this is RC Guy Garage, yeah. So anyways, this is RC Guy Garage, and I'm out ripping the DRC 9300 uh, Little Sandy Land. I really wish they would figure out different names for vehicles, because Sandy Land just kind of reminds me of Candy Land. And that just doesn't apply for this. So I'm out. Hopefully you're out. You're out ripping something. Even a little 1 18th scale vehicle such as this can be can be a blast. You can have smiles for miles. So like I always say, just get out there, whatever scale size it is, whether if it's one to one or all the way down to a small little 118 scale like this, just get out there and rip it.